Hello and welcome to another week of energy and star sign readings with myself, Thomas Janak. We're looking at the week of October the 26th to November the 1st, 2020. This is the week where the veil between worlds is thinner, which is why I thought it is just fitting to have some stars in the background. Um, truth be told, that little LED star cloth thing I bought, um, you know, to have a backdrop for my drums when I'm in a band. But with um, the restrictions that we're under, you know, the whole COVID-19 thing, I haven't found a band yet. Anyway, that thing has arrived, so I thought I'm going to, you know, put it in the living room for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, so, and yet somehow it fits nicely. Okay, because this is the week of um, the full moon on the 31st of October, and this is the week of, uh, uh, or this is still a time of, of um, Mercury retrograde, this is also the time where Halloween uh, um, is uh, <laughs> celebrated, even though I read this meme earlier where it says instead of saying trick or treat, they say, they say track and trace, right? Because of the epoxy situation we are all in. But Mercury retrograde has to be mentioned because retrogrades do affect people an awful lot. It's not a myth. It's not something people make up um, to feel special. Retrograde affects a lot of people and a lot of us. And um, it is, has always been my experience that um, your attitude or the attitude that, that you bring to the table oftentimes informs your reality. So um, these readings are sort of um, a heads up to what's going to happen energetically and then you still decide how much things affect you and that's why we're getting advice from the guides uh, with regards to how to behave um, when, when situations come your way. So, but please remember, retrograde can make you feel vulnerable and so pace yourself right, it's really really important. So let's have a look at the overall energy for the week ahead. Let's have a look what we got for the week ahead. Not surprising. <laughs> this week, October the 26th to November the 1st, 2020, is a week where deep healing is happening. Now, combined just playing around here, combined with um, the retrograde that I just mentioned, um, it can amplify the way you feel. And healing oftentimes means you are uh, vulnerable, you feel not so great. And this is why, this is the message. We have the grizzly bear and the tail deer. And what that means is the bear is all about femininity it's all about your softer side, our softer side. So what we have been asked to do is to be in our softer energy, be non-argumentative, just allow ourselves to be who we truly are, right? And then we have the deer, which means because we're going through healing, deep healing, combined with... Um, feeling hit with a baseball bat because of the Mercury retrograde that only goes, uh, Mercury only goes direct on the 3rd of November, I'm afraid. So we need to allow ourselves time to just step back and relax. And that's the overall energy for this week. Healing needs to happen. So allow it to happen, but step back a little from anything you are normally doing, if that makes sense, um, so that you can heal in peace, if that makes sense. It oftentimes sounds worse than it actually is, but because of this very week, <coughs> I wouldn't underestimate the urgency of allowing healing to happen, right? So that was the overall energy, um, and now I'm going to just quickly 
get myself a, a drink and then we're going to the star sites. Okie dokie, I'll be back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> and now we're going to the first star sign. And the first star sign is Scorpio, because that's the star sign we're ultimately in. Here we go. And for Scorpio, again, you have a bear and the kingfisher. So the bear, like I said already in the overall energy, is the animal that denotes that healing is super important and so important to let things run through your system and heal. And the kingfisher is telling you that there's nothing to worry about this week for you as long as you acknowledge that healing can happen, it is allowed to happen, because no matter what life throws at you, when you're in your calmness and you say, like, I know I'm not feeling too great this week, I understand that things can now come out that probably have taken hold inside your soul for a long time, just let it happen and you're going to be fine. Right? Short and sweet for Scorpio going into Sagittarius. Okay, Sagittarians, let's have a look at what the overall energy has got for you. So far, even though we're only in the second star sign, I can already feel and see overlapping energy. And because the overall energy is for us to allow healing to happen, it's not surprising that Sagittarius have the heron and the swan. So the heron is, a, is basically um, a bird that stands in the water all day. And when the fish comes, he goes, thank you. <laughs> and the swan, I will explain this in a, right now. This is what the messages mean. Just relax. Opportunities will come your way, right? Don't go out to look for trouble. Don't start conversations with people that are maybe fruitless, that are fictitious, because as your healing happens, you might crave answers, but this is not the week to be confrontational. And it's also important to realize, which is where the swan comes in, you are good the way you are. The swan is a bird that has to be waterproof before you can swim. The depiction of the swan in the deck I'm using here is, a, is an adult. So all that basically means is you are good enough for whatever you're going through. You also are good enough for any situation that you encounter and you're certainly good enough and um, therefore allowed to manifest better. And that's all the guides are saying to you is don't allow anyone to, you know, what's the word, invade your low self-esteem to add to the problems, hence the heron. He's like, no, I'm just going to stand back here. I will be fine. Okay, that was that. Going into Capricorn. Capricorn, because we're all going through healing this week, it is important for you to not lose track of life. If you feel you're in a situation that you have problems with, remember this is the week for, for, for deep healing, so as we're going through it, or as you're going through it this week, um, things will come off that are bothering you, if that makes sense, right? So let them, let them come off, but the guides are saying to you is always remember, if you had a different outlook, if you feel because I'm healing and I'm now assessing my life and feel this isn't for me, then new opportunities will come your way. If you are a person that says, well, this is for me, but I still need to heal and let go of stuff, the same applies. New opportunities can come to you when you manifest anew, right? And this is why they're saying it, because you have the snowy owl 
owls draw an auditory map to hear the mouse in the undergrowth. So what they're saying is as, as long as you pay attention to the things you are manifesting, you will get there, right? <clears throat> it's just that this week the energy um, is all about allowing ourselves and allowing yourselves, therefore, um, to heal. It will might, it might, this is the feeling I'm getting, um, things might feel a bit sluggish, you feel a bit slow, you feel like, whoa, this is all very heavy. And all the guys are saying is, let it be heavy, because you will be fine, life continues, and you will have tons of opportunities come your way, right? <clears throat> that was Capricorn going into Aquarius. <laughs> Aquarius. Don't worry, guys. Guys, I, I, and guys. I'm not using this um, light every week. I just thought, you know, because I have it here and it, it, it has stars, it's great. But um, uh, from the way I look at the camera, um, it might cause some issues with actually seeing things in the video. So I'm only using it this week, right? Going into um, Aquarius, right? So you have the gray squirrel and the big horn sheep. So what they're saying is, while you're going through the motions of letting stuff go, new ideas will come to you. And the new ideas that will come to you are ideas that are worth manifesting because new ideas this week can really lead to massive changes. And because you're going through healing, where you also be where you are also been shown what isn't working it all helps you to assess oh this is where i'm at and then make changes so aries um sorry aquarius rather um you have a you have a great um week in the sense that you just need to pay attention to your new ideas to whatever comes into your mind and and trust it and believe it and begin to um Work on it, if that makes sense, and things will be fine. Okay? Going into Pisces. Pisceans. My star sign. We have the beaver and the peregrine falcon. This is not the week for us Pisceans to throw in the towel anywhere. Right? This is not the week to say it's all too much or screw you, I'm off. <laughs> this is not the week for us Pisceans to do that. <clears throat> because we are the builder of bridges, which means we may have small circles of friends, um, but we cherish those friends. We also um, really decide where we are going. So if you're going to a, a gym or you're going to a place where you allow yourself to spend time, right? you thought about this beforehand, whether or not this is your place. And so the guides are saying is, these places that you picked are already safe because of your intuition that works. right? So Stick to your routines this week, if that makes sense. Really important because we have the beaver. Stick, stick, to your, uh, stick to your routines. See the people you normally see. But because you have the peregrine falcon, it means while you're observing your life in scenarios that are not new to you, this is where you also um, can get, or we also can get, new ideas. So in short, stick to the program, <laughs> um, continue with whatever it is you're doing right now, but change your thoughts by being a bit more open to receiving new ideas and just relax wherever you are. So that was for Pisceans and like I said, it's my star sign too. <clears throat> and now we're going into Aries. We have the spider and the ram for Aries. You are the creator of your web of life. 
this week because we're going through healing. Remember the overall energy, we're going through healing. This week, you need to have a closer look at your life and you decide how much space and time you give to situations and people in your life. And maybe, this is just what I'm getting from the guides, it's important to not just reflect, but make changes. Simply because you are a person that can easily give too much time to people and therefore drain your energy or be drained, right? And so there's a part of you that sacrifices itself for others, which is a nice thing to do, but because you're going through healing like the rest of us, and we are in retrograde, where everything seems or feels much harder and much more difficult than it would in any other normal week, what the guides are saying is, pay attention to how much space and time you give and be honest with yourself by saying, you know what, I need some me time. <clears throat> and then take the me time. Really, really important. Right? That was short and sweet for Aries going into Taurus. Let's have a look for the Taurians, what we have. Taurians, trust your intuition. Keep observing your life. Keep looking at where you're going and stay in the moment. Really, really important for you to stay in the moment. So don't overthink. Don't see, well, maybe if I do this, then in three weeks time I can do this. No plans for the future. Stay in the now. That doesn't mean you can't plan for the future, but you have to assess every step along the way. Um, and you have the ring-necked pheasant, which is the animal that tells you that um, with regards to Taurians, and we had that before with Taurians, actually, in some other uh, um, videos or other weeks, um, your communication skills are not fully with you at this point in time. And so you could say the wrong things, you could fail to get your points across, which is why the guides are saying is, don't do it. Just keep observing. And as you stay in the now, you will also notice, because I'm staying in the now, I can see things very clearly and I know exactly how my life is at this point in time. So what I'm getting in short for Taurians is to trust what you feel and to trust your intuition. And remember, your intuition does not lie, does not deceive you. Just trust your own judgment. Right. So now going into Gemini. There we go. We're getting a bit more for Gemini because normally the guides give me uh, uh, two animal guides. Now they have given you or me three for Gemini. You have the chipmunk, the arctic wolf and the barn owl. The one in the middle is the arctic wolf. The one in the middle we pay the most attention to. So I start with the arctic wolf. Remember the overall energy is we're going through healing. And for Gemini, which is your arctic wolf, Although you're still asked to be in charge of your life, right? Be in charge of the situations that occur in your life. You're also vulnerable at this point in time. And so being in charge does not mean to run a military operation, if that makes sense, right? Um, so let me just try to explain this a bit a bit easier because you have the chipmunk. What they're saying is nobody can fool you because you see the world exactly the way it is. And so trust that. Whatever comes your way, you got this. You kind of go like, yeah, I know where this is going. And you're right. You are where this is going, with, which is what keeps you in charge of your reality. And then you have the barn owl, which is, again, 
uh, 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 an animal of um, <laughs> okay in my experience we don't really understand animals all that well you know we look at them and we we, we um, uh, you know use human um, intelligent intelligence to measure things and animals have been here for much longer than we have so they know a thing about a thing or two about the world and they don't have to prove to us how clever they are right and because this is a week where energy is difficult and communication may be difficult what the guides are saying is stay in control stay in charge of what happens to your life trust what you see <clears throat> but don't Go around explaining yourself to others because you don't have to. They have absolutely no right to question you about stuff, especially this week where we are still in retrograde and where healing means that um, you may feel very vulnerable. Remember, you have the Arctic wolf. The wolf tells you to be in charge, but animals in the Arctic are very vulnerable. So that's why they're saying is, right, just pay attention to your reality, step back a little and just trust. Really, really important for Gemini going into Cancer, Cancerians coming up right now. We're looking at the week of October the 26th to November the 1st, 2020. And for Cancerians, it's actually not a bad week at all. Because we have another heron here, uh, where they're saying is opportunities come your way, provided you just stay calm. And as you stay calm and allow yourself to go, so see, this is what I'm getting for Cancerians, is that sometimes you can block your own healing by dismissing it, by thinking, I don't want to feel vulnerable, so go away with this. And all they're saying is trust Allow yourself to go through healing, to stand in your power this week, and you will lead your life the same way you normally do, if that makes sense. So you're not going to be super vulnerable, but it is important for you to allow yourself to uh, address situations that um, make you feel less that make you feel vulnerable that make you feel uh, less appreciated and let them run through your system because none of you the things that happen in your life um must uh what's the word define you if that makes sense right so if you just stay stand in your calmness <coughs> stand in your calmness you will still be in charge of your life and um, so don't let people and situations upset you for, for Cancerians, I feel strongly that the good thing for you to do is to do your normal activities and then just retreat and have some me time. I think what I'm getting for Cancerians is really taking time out from everything else in life, if that makes sense, right? So only do the things that you are basically contracted to do, you know, do the things that are that are inevitable that you sign up for you know um and then spend time with yourself um and allow yourself to let go of stuff okay so now we're going into leo okay leos you have the ferret <coughs> and the river otter Sometimes a bit difficult to explain what that really means for what that what the 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 the, the, world, the week obviously is about allowing yourself to heal, and the ferret is another animal that sort of denotes that communication is hampered and is difficult um, this week, right? So this week is important for Leo. Don't over-explain everything, right? Don't say things 10 times. If people are thick and they don't get it, point is explaining it again. And I don't mean this in a bad way, but the feeling that I'm getting is, is that somehow you're on this quest to 
get everything sorted and everything um, put in order. And all the guides are saying is, this is not the week where communication works so well, right? So what I'm getting stronger is more that you take charge and that you tell people what to do because explaining it to them will probably mean that unless they're their own devices, they mess it up, <laughs> if that makes sense. At the same time, you have the river otter. And the otter is the animal that sort of denotes we're holding hands to not drift off. Just allow for people to have their issues this week, right? Don't judge them. Don't go like, ah, oh, for crying out loud, <laughs> right? Don't be too affected by the people you encounter. And I'm getting, this is important, because I'm getting that this, what they're talking about is much more work-related and life-related as opposed to relationship-related. So because our job, all of our job, jobs this week is to, um, to heal, so when it comes to your personal life, your private life, just allow yourself to go through whatever your soul wants to go through this week, right? Your personal life is not really that affected, um, provided that you allow yourself to kind of remember that um, allowing yourself to heal means to slow down a little, right? So, yeah, that's really all I got for, for Leo. And now we're going into Virgo, and then we only have Libra left, so it's two star signs uh, for this week. Going into Virgo. Okay, Virgos, you are actually asked to not just sit back, but to make yourself known. You have the horse and the frog, which means if there are situations in your life that do not work for you, you are allowed to end them. You are allowed to stop things that aren't working. You are asked, for want of a better word, to actually move away from the stresses. And this is a weird term that the guides give me, but just the way they talk that make you feel small, that make you feel I'm not appreciated. And I feel like no matter what I put in, it's not seen or not appreciated enough. So what they're saying is free yourself from it this week. Walk away. And here's the other thing, because you have the frog here. Um, it just means that you can live on land and water, being an amphibian. The analogy basically is, as you start walking away, new opportunities will come to you. You're not as stuck as you think. But because the overall energy is to allow for healing to happen, don't expect everything to happen at once. All they're saying is, look at your life. If you feel this isn't working, you begin to walk away. Right? which also will then mean that you feel a bit more lost, which actually aids the, um, the importance of healing, if that makes sense, and going through that routine um, and, and through that, um, well, this week, inevitable feeling of feeling, whoa, it's quite, quite difficult. That's what healing is, if that makes sense, right? And um, so the guides are saying to you is don't worry, you walk away and no matter what happens, you will be fine because you got skills. You know an awful lot of stuff. It's just you sometimes don't remember it. <laughs> right? So that's really important. Okay. Lost my train of thought here. <laughs> One second. <laughs> Haven't forgotten everything. I just almost forgot that we have Libra still to do because I remember saying earlier, oh, we only have Leo and Virgo, and I was really convinced in my mind that somehow this all ends. And then I thought, like, hmm, something is off. Yes, and I know what was off. I almost forgot to <laughs> to look at at uh, Libra. So my apologies. It's just we're moving into Scorpio, and um, you know, I wasn't with it. Anyway, we're looking at the week of October the 26th to November the 1st, 
2020, the week where we have a full moon on the 31st of October, the week where the veil between the worlds is really thinned, so you have much better access um, to your guides. You also have much better access to your ancestors, if that makes sense. And therefore you can connect much easier to situations, which is why this is so important to allow for healing to happen. Because this week you have all the support, even if it is um, from an unseen world for many, if that makes sense. right? So I just wanted to say that. <coughs> and now we're going into the last star sign, which is Libra. Right? Let's just have a look. At what we got for Libra. Libra, you've got the um, the lion and the coyote. So what that means for for uh, Libras this week is while you go through healing, which is the over energy for the week, while your healing is important, you need to make sure that your personal space is safe. This is the week where you would, where you do need to let people know that there's boundaries in place this week because the universe really wants you to heal. So the more energy you give to other people and situations, the less you will pay attention to your own needs. So make sure you have boundaries and don't hint at things. Don't apologize for not having the time you give to everybody. Just tell them, I need some time to heal. Really, really important. And even if you don't feel like you need time to heal, you certainly can charge your batteries better if you have some boundaries in place and you have much more time for yourself. Now, if you feel, or if people, this is always the thing, you tell them, you know, I haven't got time for you this week because I'm putting myself first. They feel rejected. Normally, they all live, they all come around. <laughs> if someone is saying like, oh, you're not there for me, I'm really um, disappointed, la, 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 la. Or you feel that because you feel you need to, some time to yourself, there will be consequences and you may or may not lose uh, a position somewhere. It's all inconsequential to your being because what the universe is promising you is you will not only get through things but there will always be enough for you to be supported so don't be in situations just because you know this is what i'm getting but i promised well you know we all promise a lot and then we do whatever we can and you are more than just a giver if that makes sense and this is a really good learning curve Sometimes to realize, you know what, I am vulnerable too. And I have to look at and after myself, right? Okay, that's all we got time for. Like I said, you know, um, as nice as this is with the stars, it looks a bit weird. <laughs> so I will not use them again, but I thought it was a nice feature, right? Okay, see you all next week. And please, please, please share the video. Thank you, guys. Love you all. Bye-bye.